of invasion, uh, which was six days ago. And then we see clearly the targets uh, have been changing. For example, we've seen several days ago, it seems to me like three days ago, uh, Ohmadet, which is Kiev Child's Hospital, was targeted and uh, there were uh, five um, casualties. One person died and out of four uh, people injured, one was the child. So um, we also see the high-rise building, residential buildings in Kiev being targeted just seven, uh, up to seven kilometers from city center. We see the Ministry of Infrastructure being targeted just days ago. We see even these, um, you know, high-rise buildings in uh, Kharkiv, you mentioned, yes, there are five-story buildings destroyed by the bombing. So uh, this can't be by mistake. There is clearly, you know, a strategy Russia is showing that um, at first it tried to um, target only military infrastructure, showing, you know, it's stupid technique, uh, technique of uh, demilitarizing Ukraine, as it was said in Kremlin and on Russia propaganda um, TV channels. But now we see that the tactics is, you know, to make people uh, scared, frightened, uh, to, to, you know, spread this terror. And by the way, um, two days ago, uh, like even a day ago, uh, there was an article um, uh, found on the Internet, which was published by some Russian propaganda media which was which had the name um, the invasion of russia and new peace and according to this article uh, it was like you know a statement of a successful russian invasion which hasn't uh, happened so um, there were guesses that this article was prepared for the quick russian invasion scenario and, and was just leaked by accident so it was published by accident and this clearly shows the tactics of russia that russia expected to invade ukraine and to make uh, giant forces surrender to put down arms just in two days and as we see russia didn't manage to do this it's we're now on day six and uh, everybody is still standing still you know defending and repelling russian attacks and uh, what really helped so much today is the help of volunteers who are procuring the army i am now by the way in the center which is uh, called the volunteer coordination center or uh, volunteer fighters health center here you can see a lot of people behind me so it's early morning actually only like uh, eight o'clock now but there is you know activity already you can see here piles of you know different stuff of uh, of water of food of some hygiene products you can see also here the um, masking masking nets lying here and for example also uh, bulletproofs it is like hanging right here and also clothing for the military and all of this uh, equipment food you know um, is uh, to procure the volunteer fighters who are um, enlisted in uh, territorial defense units which um, play important role in this war so we have armed forces and we have uh, these volunteer units which are called territorial defense and they stand in the streets with guns and protect uh, they also shoot if, if needed they have this mandate from the state but the state can't cover the you know demands of equipment because there are so many people that even sometimes the arms are lacking so there is a lack of weapons to give them and volunteers are the force which is now you know covering the needs of the army both and of course of the volunteer fighters and all of this picture you see yes there are a lot of people doing something bringing some stuff and it is only eight o'clock uh, now it is still a curfew um, in Kiev, and after the curfew, there will be like a traffic of people coming here, taking something, bringing to the positions, and bringing some new stuff to help people. So all of the all of this Maria, the place where you're at right now. Yeah. Apologies for interrupting you. The place where yeah, you're right. at right now. Are people also receiving weapons there? Are you able to show us that, or is it only a place where they're getting food and supplies? And uh, no, uh, no weapons because this is the volunteer center and right. the weapons are okay. given by the state. So the, the weapon, uh, rifle, machine gun or whatever there is, are given only by by the state recruitment center. So it is the only thing they can give. Other things are given by the volunteers. So if you want to defend your country and you're not in military, you can enlist in this um, um, territorial defense unit. You are given a weapon. 
and that's it. Everything else is your business and business of the volunteers, so to say. So they cover all the needs from food to bulletproofs to helmets and um, clothing, you know, shoes and other things. So, you know, like crowdfunding to uh, equip the volunteer fighting units here in Ukraine, not only in Kyiv. The same activities are happening all over Ukraine and there are bigger centers, smaller centers. This one is one of the, you know, biggest and most prominent because a lot of people who are, uh, have been volunteering for eight years work here. And this, you know, force and the spirit here really gives the hope that um, Ukrainian army will withstand and um, Ukrainian volunteer fighters all so contribute to the victory of Ukraine. Maria, stay with me. Uh, you know, the pictures on our screen right now, and we've curated all of the pictures that capture the very latest of what's happening inside Kyiv city and the neighboring areas, because the, the, the full focus of this invasion on day six is now centered around Kyiv. And what Maria is basically showing us is that the city is bracing for what could be a major assault. We hope that doesn't happen, but the problem is the peace talks that were happening since yesterday have flopped. They've not gone anywhere, no big takeaway. In fact, the hostilities and belligerence of the language being used on both sides has only increased. And the pictures, I don't even need to describe them. They speak for themselves on how hostilities and violence has actually escalated dramatically since those two so-called peace delegations met on the Belarus-Ukraine border.